Hello, welcome and a very good evening to another episode of Let's Code MS-DOS. And something that I've been frequently asked about was sound programming, actually. We did a little bit of uh, sound blaster programming for playing back digitized sound, but uh, the sound blaster has another part, uh, that is the FM synthesis for playing music, and that is compatible to the original AdLib card, which you can see on screen here. Um, many, many years back I also built one of the early replicas by TubeTime. I think there is also, deep in the history of the channel, buried a video about exactly that. But the card looks basically just like this one here, and this big chip here in the middle, that's the OPL2 or also known as the Yamaha YM3812, with its little tiny digital to analog converter here on the side. And this card could play synthesized music using so-called FM synthesis, frequency modulation synthesis, with up to nine voices of yeah, sound, basically, each channel being able to be reprogrammed individually, or alternatively, um, six voices with five percussion instruments, bass drum, pom pom, hi hat, cymbals, and snare drum. So, there is a very nice um, document called the Adlib Music Synthesizer Card Programming Guide, which explains all the theory and also all the registers, and in this particular episode we will code a little drum machine basically which will sound crap because i'm not a musician um, but in the hands of a musician could probably produce something that you could listen to um, but the main part being i show you how to program the device itself and then maybe you can get something more advanced out of it I want to try and make another episode where we deal with the uh, melodic part of the sound card because the principles are almost the same and you have to know a little bit about the theory behind sound synthesis and I will cover a small amount of that today and um, hope that you can understand and follow along. There are a couple of things, and it's well explained in the first page, basically, of this thing. Um, synthesizer, such as the OPL2 chip on the AdLib card, works by having oscillators, uh, which produce a vibration, basically, which gets fed through an envelope generator, which has a volume shape, basically, attack, decay, sustain, and release. I won't say too much about it, but it basically tells you how fast the sound is appearing, how long it takes to get a bit quieter, and when it turns off, if at all. And then it goes through a level controller, which is not so important right now, but can still modify the output levels, and then gets output. And the AdLib card can do two things. It can do additive synthesis. It can take two oscillators, or operators in this case, producing sine waves or different waveforms and just add them together, which can sound interesting, but also pretty clean. Um, the other way that it can work is it can take one oscillator called the modulator, which changes the frequency of the second operator. Uh, let's say you tune the second uh, operator, which is called the carrier, to like an A, just note A of the, I don't know, fifth octave or something, and then modulate it using a different operator, maybe even faster than the original one. It will vibrate around the frequency of the A, but not stay the same. And depending on the waveforms of both operators, you can get quite complex sounds. Um, let's see if we have a graph here. Does it show? No, it doesn't show the waveforms actually, but there are different waveforms that you can program. There is basically sine waves, something similar to a square wave and a triangle wave, 
and you can get uh, something on that. The waveform select enable, yes, that is fine. Um, but doesn't here. Here we have the waveforms. So basically, you can have a sign, a half sign, an absolute sign, or a pulse sign. The uh, pulse sign is basically sounds very similar to a square wave, although it's a bit rounded off because the Adlib can't produce square waves. The half sign is similar to uh, something like a sawtooth. And the absolute sign, similar but not the same as a triangular wave, um, for those who already know stuff about synthesis. But those are the closest you will get out of the um, Adlib sound card, basically. The next thing you need to know is that the sound card is reachable via two addresses, 388 hex and 389 hex. The other options not being really supported, uh, but what it was planned. Um, the first register is basically the index register where you tell which register to write. And um, the second one is where you put the data to. It's similar to how the VGA card works. Then. Um, there's the actual registers, uh, there's the status register for reading, which we won't be using, and the data register, which has uh, this matrix here. These are the data bits in each byte of the registers, and these are the registers themselves. There are single registers, which are for the whole card, and then there's like ranges of um, usually 16 which are for the different oscillators that you can program. And um, smaller ones like these here, which are blocks of nine, which are for the individual melodic voices. And there's one special register just for programming the drums, which we'll be using. In this register, you need to turn on the fifth bit, which is for the percussion mode, and then you can toggle the uh, instruments bass drum, snare drum, tom tom, cymbals, and hi hats on by just toggling the bits. So sounds relatively easy, but you still need to program the attack, decay, sustain, and release for all these oscillators, as well as the pitch of the oscillators, which is basically the note, which is divided up on to uh, this register here, A0 through A8 for each of the voices, for the lower 8 bits and the highest 2 bits because there's 10 bits for the frequency in the registers D0 and D1 of B0 to B8. And the block number is basically the octave. There's a very useful table at the end of the document showing the different octaves. And for example, if you want to program the um, node A5, giving you 440 hertz. Um, yeah, basically that's, uh, you need to choose block five and then figure out what the frequency number is. And there's a formula for that, um, which is here. It's um, music frequency. So let's open up the calculator. And the frequency is 440 times two to the power of 20 minus the block. The block was five, so that's two to the power of 15, divided by four, nine, seven, one, six, because that's basically the sampling frequency of the chip internally. And you get 290 point, a very small number. So what you wanna use is the 290, um, you will want to put that number into the uh, A0 register, depending on which channel you're of course using, uh, and the higher two bits into uh, the D0 and D1 bits of B0 through B8, depending on which uh, channel you want to use, and setting the block number to five in this example. And you can do that for all the voices independently, so you can play different notes at different times. That's the theory. Um, the practical implementation um, will look very similar to that, but there's a lot of 
small things that you have to take care of. And we'll switch over to DOSBox where I uh, implemented already the stop program. Again, just like in our other programs, we will have um, a couple of helper variables, a uh, main loop, which waits for the escape key. And if a key press was there, we can we will be able to hit the drums with the number keys one, two, three, four, or five, from bass drum to snare and so on. And we will have a couple of um, other things. We will have an array of values, drums, which is 512 entries long, and it will be synced to the vertical refresh, so you get 17 ticks per second. And um, every time you press a key, it will be stored, so your key presses will be played back in a loop, basically making a drum machine. Um, so what we need to do is we need to learn how to reset the adlib card, enable the rhythm mode, because usually the card starts up in melodic mode, or you don't know what it is actually in, because it's a mostly a read-only chip, um, so you have to reset it to known values in the first function. In the second function, we will enable the rhythm mode. And then in the loop here, we will be playing the actual uh, stuff. The rhythm mode will also program all the ADSR and oscillators and so on. So yeah, let's let's go do it and start off with um, resetting the card. The first order of business is to define a bunch of constants that will help us. First of all, we will code the adlib offset register, which is 0x388 and the adlib data register, which is 0x389. And we'll also code the different registers inside the adlib OPL chip. Um, those will be the register for the attack and decay rates, AR and DR, which will form the envelope. And maybe I can put a little comment here. Um, so attack, sustain, and release. If you don't know it, um, for those who can uh, already know about this, basically trying to draw something here in, in ASCII, um, you can think of it like something like this. Uh, I think this is actually turning out pretty nice. Um, this part here on the left is the so-called attack phase, where the tone gets louder until it reaches peak. Then we get a slight decay when you've hit the key, basically, and it goes down a little bit to be a bit quieter. Then you have the sustain, which is um, as long as you're pressing the key on the keyboard, it will stay like that. And when you release the key, this is the release phase. And that's basically the whole um, volume envelope. And the first register uh, deals with the attack and decay fac uh, values. Um, both are 14 four bits, so 16 values that you can actually use. And that's stored in register 60 um, plus i, where i is the i um, oscillator basically that you're manipulating. Furthermore, we have the register for sustain uh, level and release rate. That's uh, hexadecimal, no, not 70, but 80. Um, next up are the, uh, is the register for the uh, frequency number. That's zero x a zero and of course for the other voices you have to add appropriately then we have the register for the or for different things actually for key on um, this is actually when you want to play a melody this is different so and we'll talk about that in the next next video uh, different from the drums which have their own thing um, for the octave block and for the uh, frequency number, the high bits. The L here stands for the lower 8 bits, and these are the higher 2 bits, basically. 
and that's 0xb0. And we have uh, adlib register drum, which is 0xbd. That's that. Um, then we will also define constants for the different drums. The bass drum is uh, hexadecimal 10, that's just um, 16, so 2 to the power of 4, the fifth bit in the BD register. Adlib snare is 0x08. Adlib tom tom is 0x04. Those are the individual bits if you convert that to binary. Should be easy enough. Then the symbol 0x02 and the hi-hat 0x01. That's pretty neat. We'll also, although we won't be using it that much here, uh, we'll still uh, have a static variable for um, the drum register itself. If we change it, we will store it here so we know its status. Furthermore, we have to reprogram the oscillators. There are, uh, let me count, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 18 oscillators, which makes sense. We have 9 voices with 2 oscillators each, um, or 6 plus 5, depending on which mode you're using. And the in indices into the registers that you have to use here for the ASDR, ADSR um, are not linear, but they're a bit jumbled up. So we will have a mapping table called uh, adlib oscillator offset. And um, that looks something like this. So the first couple of things are as expected, uh, 0, 2, 3, up until 5 everything is just fine and dandy, if I were to press the correct keys. But then there's a gap, um, next oscillator is actually index 8, 9, and A is again expected. And then we continue with B as expected. D. And then we get another surprise because it's now 10. Um, because there's no E and no F index, basically. Um, 0x11, 0x12. 0x13, 0x14, 0x15. You can find this information in the programming manual. Basically, this is taken straight from there, so to speak. Um, then, the question is, how do we write to the Adlib OPL chip? Well, um, simply enough, we use the outport byte function. We use that in the VGA programming lots and lots. First, we write the to the offset um, register and choose the appropriate register that we want to write to. Um, for example, something like adlib ARDR, which would be hexadecimal 60. And then we do outport byte adlib data and we write the value. Simple enough, isn't it? Well, in theory, in emulation, this might work, but in real life it won't because the OPL chip is slow. It takes quite a few microseconds to settle um, while choosing the register and um, writing the actual data, so we need to do a little loop. Um, and 
the manual is actually pretty specific that um, you need to do six rounds of input from the same register to have everything settled in. And uh, the and this depends basically on the speed of the ISA bus and how fast the input reads from the ISA bus. But a uh, regular 8 megahertz um, or 6 megahertz bus should be fine with doing so. On faster machines with faster buses, you might need to increase this, but a regular PC, which has the normal ISA bus frequencies, should work. When writing data, you actually need to do a lot more iterations. Um, there they say you need to do 35 iterations. And we better also use the same register. It shouldn't make a difference because reading from the ISA bus will be all the same. So um, that is the delay. And this is basically our core function that we use all the time for manipulating the OPL chip. So now the next part will be to reset the OPL to be in a usable state. We will definitely need some iteration variable for the initialization of all the oscillators and voices. We also already pick um, an octave here to set a default frequency, um, because without a default frequency there will be no sound at all, especially from the drums. So I take octave 3 right now, but actually it doesn't really matter. Um, we can pick anything here that uh, you like. Um, actually, we should probably use... Um, let's start with Octave 5, because we said we wanted to use that. Um, but we can play around with that later. Uh, now let's use also the frequency number, which for the A5 note as we calculated, it's 290. This is just so all the drums will play in A. Um, you can pick anything else here. Um, I'm gonna use for all the channels right now just an A5, so we get 440 hertz. When you play music, you will tweak that pitch around. It's just the default value. Next up, um, we need to enable the uh, wave select enable bit, which lets us choose the waveforms. We don't do that in this episode, but before we forget to do that in the next, I'm just gonna do it like that. Um, we should actually perhaps create a define for that, but I'm not gonna bother with that right now. Important thing is it's the uh, sixth bit, so 0x20. Next, ape, next uh, step is disable the speech mode. Um, the OPL2 has a weird mode that lets you do synthesized speech, although no one ever used that to my knowledge. And that is in register 8, and you need to just null it. Um, otherwise, you will not be able to enter rhythm or um, music mode. And uh, also, we will need to um, enter the rhythm mode, basically, or disable it, depending on what you want. So here we can use our adlib register drum thing that we did before. So same here, we should probably um, name the register to make it a bit more readable. Uh, and put 0x20 in there. And that is basically already the reset itself, but we will um, configure the ADSR envelopes so that we will hear something at some point. So we are going over all the 18 oscillators that we have, and we will just simply set them all to A5. And that is being done by, uh, no, not A5, but to, to some some medium 
volume curve because that's the ADSR. The oscillator's um, pitch will come next. Sorry for that confusion. So first of all, adlib register uh, attic rate and decay rate plus obviously the uh, index. We now need to use it and the adlib oscillator offset for the nth channel or ith channel and we'll use 99. Um, I figured out that sounds pretty reasonable for our drums. For melody you might want to tweak that. Um, sustain level and release rate. Similar thing here and I think if I remember correctly the higher the number the shorter the time. Um, but you can play around with the numbers. Um, it will change the sound significantly, the ADSR. So that's that. And then we will configure the pitch, the default pitch. Here we have nine voices. So we will use the uh, low and the high register and we don't need the offset here because this is actually very linear so we can delete everything but the eye and um, we use first of all the block and shift it to to the left because it's in bits uh, two and three basically uh, counting from zero um, and actually that is not the correct register because this is the FNL register for the lower bit so we just take our A5 node and just mask on the lower eight bits and this gives us the information and now we have what we want um, we need to fill in the block by shifting the block number by two and oring that with the highest two bits from A5 so A5 gets shifted A to the right and this gives us our setting. Um, this is how you write single bits basically to a byte. Um, if you don't know why that works, um, just look up how the AND and the left and right shifting and the OR works and uh, try to count it out on paper basically. It's actually not that super hard, um, but that's how we can set all the bits as they are explained in this nice graph here. We set these eight bits, then these two bits and or them together with the block number. Okay, and that is it. Um, we configure the pitch and that's actually um, already what we wanted to see here. All right. Um, then for enabling the rhythm mode, um, I figured out that um, we might want to use also some other nodes um, and put them onto the oscillators for the different drums to make them sound more natural because everything playing F5 doesn't sound quite good. So I'm, I want to use an A4 node, which I calculated to be a 70. A7, which I calculated to be a frequency number of 870. Again, always using the same formula that uh, you saw in the documentation, namely this formula here. You can just plug that those values in. And we are using block 3 here. Uh, so that's that. Then we will enable the drum mode or the rhythm mode bit, which means uh, we take our drum register variable and turn on bit number five, I think. Is that correct? Um, is that bit number five? BD is here and that's uh, bit number five indeed. Percussion mode, they call it. Uh, doing that, we can 
write that using our function adlib register key on uh, no that's wrong register drum of course with the adlib register drum variable so that does all the magic also to higher pitch so tom tom to higher pitch because it sounds better that way we do the adlib register adlib register fnl that's the lower bits plus eight because um oscillator eight is actually the one for the tom toms there's also a lookup somewhere here um exactly tom tom is oscillator 15 and oscillator 15 belongs to channel 8 so that's why you need to do it like that and we're gonna play an a7 on that particular drum and it should sound a little bit better um, similarly we need to set the block con block and f and h same as we did before we take the block shift it to le left by two or this with the a7 node shifted eight to the right and we set the pitch for the tom tom and we do the same for the bass drum but we make it a lower pitch to make it more bassy So bass drum to lower pitch. Um, the bass drum has two oscillators, 13 and 16, and they belong to channel 6. So we replace that with a 6 here. Uh, and we forgot the plus 8 here, which is not good. So plus 6. And we play an A4, and here as well so that's that i think we are good and um, we will also adjust adsr for uh, symbol and hi-hat to slower values because i noticed that there uh, are my default values are a bit too fast for those um, so we're gonna pick up here the ADSR setting and copy that twice. And we are gonna look up the oscillators for the uh, hi-hat and the symbols, which are 18 and 14 basically. So um, we need to subtract one because here we are zero based and that table is one based, um, 18, 13 and 17, sorry. And we're gonna set those to 88 and 55, so a little bit slower. Same here, 88 and 55. You can play around with these values and hope to get something more interesting. So that's that again. Does this still compile? Uh, there's a bunch of errors. Um, I probably mistyped something here. Adlib A R D R. Oh, okay. Um, probably misnamed those. Yes, I should name them correctly with the register in there, so we know that those are registers. I can make it look a bit nicer. But all, okay, now we got a couple of warnings, which makes sense. Okay, because we don't do anything here. Okay, play drums. Mm, that's actually pretty simple. We simply write to the drum register and turn off all the notes basically and we can do this just by 
writing the current contents of the adlib register drum register. And to turn on the notes, to actually hit the drums, um, we just or this with the drums. So basically you do a key off and then a key on event. Um, this is obviously not optimal because you want to record the key on and key off events separately. But for our very simple purposes here, this is good enough. So if you want to go above and beyond, you could not only do um, a one, one array with key on events, but you could have two arrays or some bits in there reserved for key on and key off events. Um, so you can go nuts with uh, with the different uh, ways to trigger the nodes, basically. What we're doing is we are doing the key on, and only when we, the next key on comes, we do the key off event. So yeah, um, it's up to you, but this will already play everything we need. So we just need to fill in the main program. Um, this is already pretty far. And first of all, um, we will check for keyboard presses. And if there's a keyboard press, we will do all our magic. First, uh, I have an increment here um, where I will count up the timer that we have by this increment and the increment starts with a zero so nothing happens but if a key is pressed and if um, increment is zero I will just start incrementing the time that basically waits for you to press the first key so that your first drum hit is always on the first tick in your sequencer basically this is just waiting for you to do something then we read out the um, character from the keyboard and later you could change this to use the low-level keyboard presses so you can record multiple key presses at once. Um, I showed you in, in another video, so you can look that up. But for now we are, we're doing a simple, very simple uh, one key at one time, basically. Okay, then we have to choose which key was pressed. And as a default, I'm going to do the following. Um, I'm gonna look into the uh, drums sequence basically, uh, modulo the number of ticks that we're actually storing. And we just, if you press another key like the spacebar, you delete whatever was there. So you can just hold a key and delete whatever you recorded. I think that's a pretty nice way of um, adjusting in this very, very simple drum machine uh, which sounds are currently played. Um, We'll come to the other keys in a second. First of all, after every iteration in our while loop, every timer increment, we want to um, play the drums, especially the ones that were just being enabled. So um, we again look into that sequence, module the ticks, and play that. Very simple. Um, and we don't want it to be dependent on the machine speed. And uh, for that, we have a function, wait for retrace, from our VGA library. And this will, at most, play 70 ticks per second, because um, the VGA card has 70 hertz. So this will wait for one frame retrace. So you get 70 ticks per second, relatively stable. That should be fine. And um, to make it more clear which part of the sequence you are currently viewing, I'm gonna print out um, the ticks, basically, as a very simple printer function. And you can think of this as which bar you're currently playing in music notation. Very rough, very hand wavy, but you, you will see a number incrementing one, two, three, and so on up to 15, from 0 to 15, uh, because we have 512 ticks divided by 32, um, but it's sort of like playing playing a bar. Um, and this should already be compiling, I think, and even running. Exactly, it's waiting for a key, and I can quit, or I can press some other keys and it will start counting. In theory it's playing, 
what you can can't hear anything um, sound is on because it's not playing yet because we haven't actually coded which drums to play so we're doing that right now um, case one uh, again we take our drums sequence modulo the ticks and we will just turn on the bit that is the bass drum just like that and then we will break and we can copy this whole block four more times to deal with all the other drums two three four and five and the other drums are in the order of their bits basically the snare drum the tom tom the cymbal and the hi-hat and now we're ready to go um let's give it a whirl it will not sound pretty but it's the best i can do it's waiting for me to press something so i press a couple of times the bass drum and now i leave my hands off the keyboard and the sequence is played back. We can add a tom tom to that. Or some other drums. Okay, I'm gonna quit this now. Obviously, I'm not a musician. I have no idea what I'm doing here, other than I can code a little bit. Um, but this is how you program the drums on the adlib and i think this is um, a good program to build upon you know now how to write to the registers how to reset the card how to program the oscillators and how the offsets work uh, you know how to program the adsr curves how to calculate a frequency to play a correct pitch and how to toggle the drums actually and how to turn on percussion mode if you want to have drums next time we will look a bit more about how to play melodies um, how to convert the notes to frequency numbers and uh, we will try and make the keyboard the computer's keyboard behave a little bit like a musical keyboard let's say so we can play in this uh, simple sequencer also a bunch of notes um, probably even polyphonic um, and maybe we can put in some other uh, options for the uh, waveforms and stuff like that but this is already um, I think a very good starting point for you to play around with um, so I hope you enjoyed it I hope you can make a lot better music and percussion than I can um, but yeah I think uh, this is a good start so if you enjoyed this leave a comment thumbs up uh, stuff like that if you haven't subscribed please do you can also support me via the usual means patreon etc etc links are all down in the video description if you can't or won't i won't be mad um, this is just my hobby but every little bit helps for me to invest especially in the hardware videos because they actually do cost money this year just cost me some time but enjoy doing these uh, let's code videos so see you in the next one